Okay, this is like a part two of 5.4 because I realized after recording 5.5 that I missed two of the practice problems. So we're gonna go over the practice problem number four. So this is a logarithmic equation, but one of the terms does not have a log, which means you have to get this log all by itself. So I'm gonna divide by five. Then I have log x minus four equal to whatever 12 divided by five is. Um, 2.4. Then I need to change the form over, but because this does not have a base, I need to know what the base is gonna be. Remember when it's just log, it's the common log and the common log has a base 10. So my base would be 10, and then not this number, but the other number will be attached to the 10. So then this gets kicked to the other side. And if I'm solving for x, all I have to do is add 4. So I get 10 to the power 2.4 plus 4 equal to x. Let's see what that is. 10 raised to the 2.4 plus 4 is 255.18 nine. And that is the result there. Now the last problem is also a logarithmic equation, but this one does have every term with a log. So on the left hand side of this equal sign, I do already have one log. But on the right hand side, I don't, I need to have it written as one log. So I'm going to use my quotient property because my quotient property says if there's a minus sign in the middle, I'm going to take this argument over this argument. Now that I have one log and one log, we use the one to one property that says in order for these two things to be equivalent to each other, this argument has to equal this argument. And now this is a rational equation which we can solve by multiplying by the common denominator. This whole thing times that common denominator. So then I get um, x plus seven times x plus three equal to x minus three. And so this is a quadratic. So I'm gonna go ahead and minus x on both sides and add three on both sides. So I can get that quadratic equal to zero. So that's 10 minus one, which is nine x and then that's 24. So I have x squared plus, uh, or not x squared. Hmm. I don't think I can factor that. Let me see, 24. One times 24, two times 12, three times eight, four times six, and that's it. Then none of those are gonna give me nine. So let me go use my quadratic formula over here. So negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over to a. Let's see, 81 minus, this is negative 15 over 2. Hmm. I'm going to get an imaginary answer. Negative b, b squared minus four times a times c. Yep, I did it right. Now, since we're getting imaginary answers, they're not gonna want me to type imaginary answers in the computer. So in the computer, this is just gonna tell me the answer is no solution. Okay. Which I don't think has happened to us yet. If we hadn't gotten an imaginary answer, then we would have been able to find our two solutions. And then you just have to make sure that none, none of those solutions make any of these arguments zero or negative, okay? Um, because your arguments always do need to be positive. But that is the last example from 5.4. Um, so I'm just gonna tag this on and just mention in the comments that it's two videos together.